stop trying to drug me, homie. We ain't that close. Like... <laughs> Jay and I am back finally after like two years of hiatus with another Jay Reads Harry Potter for the first time as a 24 year old now. It was 21 years old when we first started this series on this channel. Now I'm 24 so we are on Harry Potter book five. This is the Order of the Phoenix. You see how I did not know the name of this book because I'm a fake fan. Obviously this is gonna have spoilers in it because it's basically the vlog of my reactions and theories and whatnot of reading Harry Potter for the first time. I obviously have not read Harry Potter the whole series. I have seen the movies, but I watched them when I was like 12 or something, so I don't remember anything about them. You can probably tell from the first four videos that I did in this series because all my theories are way off and totally wrong and kind of funny to be honest. All I know about this one is that Umbridge is introduced and everybody fucking hates Umbridge. Obviously I don't know why but we're gonna find out. So come along with me on the journey of reading Harry Potter for the first time. I'm literally only on page 13 but it talks about how, like, Harry is stuck at Privet Drive right now and that Hermione and Ron sent him chocolate for his birthday and he threw them away because he's mad at them. Okay, even if I was mad at the person who gave me chocolate, you know damn well I'd be eating that chocolate, so what the fuck is wrong with Harry? Also, isn't he supposed to be like, I don't know, 12, 13 in this book? Like, he's young, right? I think? Like, he's a child. No child is gonna throw out chocolate. Unrealistic. It was realistic when it was like about wizards and shit, but children throwing out chocolate? You lost me there, JK. So it turns out Harry's 14, so I stand by my chocolate statement. This some bullshit. Okay, so I'm only on page 22 when the Dementor comes and like attacks Harry and Dudley in the alleyway, and Harry calls his Patronus, which is like the stag. And I was thinking, like, if I had a Patronus, I took the Patronus test and apparently I was, like, a horse or some shit. Totally not true. I would be, like, a fucking sloth. And that thing would be, like, I'd be, like, expecto Patronus. And it'd be, like, stop. Let me protect you. And it ain't gonna do shit and then I'd be dead. So... <laughs> I actually am curious about, like, what, leave down below what you think my Patronus would be based off of, like, my personality. I know that that's not what a Patronus is, but I ain't no fucking horse, okay? I don't want to be a horse girl. Okay, am I just stupid or, like, should I know what a squib is? There's, like, this old lady who is apparently a squib. I'm guessing that's, like, someone who knows about magic, but doesn't possess any of the magic. I honestly have no idea, but she just found Harry and Dudley and that's squib. Squib. This Miss Figs character is like beating this guy with a bag full of cat food and if I am not Miss Figs when I'm older, just like take me out now because th she is everything I aspire to be. Like crazy old cat lady beating up men with cat food. Yes, please. Harry just got expelled from Hogwarts for using the... Ex Patronus thing, right? And then they're like, we regret to inform you that you have to come to this meeting because you already have a offense on your record or whatever. But if he's already expelled, like, why would he go to this meeting? Like, he can't go back to the wizard world, so like, what's the point of going to this meeting? It's stupid. Like, me as Harry, I'd be like, I'm not coming, bro. But I guess like he needs to like plead his case for why he did the Patronus spell, which like the Dementors, so like it's a good reason, but also like I'd be like, fuck y'all, stupid wizard people. So I just got to the part where Harry isn't actually expelled anymore. He has like a meeting on August 12th and Uncle Vernon is like, have they sentenced you to anything? Do your lot have the death penalty? He added as a hopeful afterthought. And I would just like to say Harry is literally 14 years old, so I'm pretty sure even if they did, have the death penalty um they're not gonna execute a child like how dumb is this dude like obviously pretty dumb because it's uncle vernon but like bruh what okay so aunt petunia just got a howler from we don't know who i'm assuming like dumbledore or like snape or something i don't know but what if petunia hear me out my wild brain is spinning but what if petunia is actually a witch 
and she just doesn't want anybody to know she's a witch so she pretends that you know like magic is bad and like evil and blah 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 but what if she's actually in cahoots with hogwarts this entire time it could be a thing it's probably not a thing but it could be a thing that's my prediction i'm at the part where uncle vernon has come into harry's room to tell him that the Dursleys are going out and that like Harry's not invited and that he's locking him in his room which I would just like to point out is really dumb because one he literally has a window that he has gone through before and Uncle Vernon is aware that he has gone through before because he held him by the damn ankles trying to pull him back in in the second book so like he knows that he can get out so why he needs to lock the door is beyond me because like that ain't gonna do shit if Harry wants to escape so Uncle Vernon is an idiot which we've already established at this point mad eye moody is back which like i love him and i don't know if that's like an unpopular opinion like i don't know if people actually like him or not but i freaking love him like when he turned malfoy into the ferret was it a ferret i don't remember but he turned malfoy into something and ever since then like he's been my boo like my favorites in the series like so far because everyone says i'm gonna love luna and like i'm like luna which i don't know her personality because i haven't met her like based off of the movie she's like a little bit cuckoo which like <laughs> me like my favorites of the whole series so far are dobby which he has not made an appearance yet and i'm mad about it curious who has not made an appearance yet and i'm mad about it but i feel like he's coming soon because like they're breaking into harry's house right now so serious better be among them moody who's here right now so i'm super excited to read about that hagrid who has not made an appearance and i need my angel baby unicorn hagrid to make an appearance hedwig obviously is in the book already because it's harry's owl so i just want my favorite characters to hurry up and come back into the story because i'm getting sick of it just being Harry and the Dudleys. Okay, I stand corrected. I now have another new favorite. It's Tonks. She has violet hair. Like, hello, how can I not love her? No idea who she is other than she has purple hair. So, I'm here for it. I'm taking back my assessment of Tonks being one of my favorite characters because she just changed her violet hair to pink bubblegum pink that's not purple therefore she's eliminated from the list of favorites she's gone i'm on chapter five now and sirius just said hi to harry and i'm so excited because i've been waiting for sirius to come back because i freaking love him so much but i'm kind of bummed that he's back because that means he's closer to death but okay so now it's saying that harry is 15 so i'm kind of confused is he 14 or 15 what is the truth so i just got to the part where fred and george are creating skiving snack boxes and they're like these candies that make you throw up so that you don't have to go to school why in the world would you want to throw up I'm terrified of puking, so I don't understand why somebody would want to make something that makes you throw up to get out of school. Like, you can literally just be like, yo, I threw up, I'm staying home, and then, like, make it out of, like, stew or something. Like, why do you need to throw up to prove that you threw up? Nobody's gonna ask to see your puke. Ew. I feel like I'm supposed to hate Creature, who is the house elf for the Black family, because he's, like, such a little dick asshole, but that honestly kind of makes me love him more, and I don't know if that's like the showcase of my character or not but i love him i'm at harry's hearing now and i just love how dumbledore just like walks in not given two fucks about anything it's just like the ministry is the reason why the dementors came so y'all are bad people figure your shit out <laughs> it's like cornelius fudge which i still stand by it being the stupidest name ever and like he's the biggest pussy ever also side note percy still hate him so annoying i just ugh, that's how i feel about him anyways back to dumbledore i know that like by the end dumbledore is not good like everybody doesn't like dumbledore which i don't know why yet i just know that people don't like him but right now I'm a fan of Dumbledore. So literally just meeting Umbridge for the first time, this bitch was the one who sent the Dementors after Harry. I don't even care. Like, that's my guess because she's a bitch. And it's literally had like one line from her being like, Um, it sounded like a minute that like a teensy little second that you were like saying that the Ministry of Magic like ordered the Dementors, but that would be silly, you silly boy. <laughs> like, no, bitch, it was you. So I just got to the part where Ron is named a prefect. And I just realized that for the last four books, I've been calling it a perfect and i also realized that i have no idea what a prefect means because i thought that it just meant like you were 
like head of the hogwart house that you were in but apparently there's more than one prefect so does that just mean like you don't get into trouble or like what the heck is it because hermione is one too now but harry isn't because he causes too much trouble or something so is that what it is it just means you don't get into trouble but i feel like ron and hermione both get into trouble because they're friends with harry so i'm very confused what it is so let me know down below what it is because i'm lost so i just met luna she seemed pretty cool for the first bit that I met her, but now she's like talking shit about my baby angel unicorn Hagrid, so I'm not really sure why you all think I'm gonna love her so much because that's my boo and I'm about to throw hands if she doesn't shut up, so I'm not really sure how I feel about little Luna because y'all said I was gonna like her. I'm not liking her. One thing I find like really funny in this book is that Neville's like prized possession is a cactus and I feel like that's like a half of the booktube community so do y'all feel attacked because you should feel attacked. So they're talking about owls and newts right now and I'm kind of confused what the difference is. Is owls supposed to be like your regular high school classes and then newts are like when you're majoring in university or something? Like is that the difference? I have no idea. So I'm at the part where Ron became a keeper for the Quidditch team and they're all practicing right now. The Slytherin team is like catcalling them during their practice, which I find weird because like as a varsity athlete or whatever, like nobody was allowed in our practices. So I don't get why people are allowed in the practices for Quidditch who aren't on the team. Clearly this is just me like nitpicking now, but it's just like dumb to me. And another thing I noticed, it like literally is never like nice weather outside at hogwarts like it's always raining is that like foreshadowing or like does jk rowling just have something against sunshine you know what i don't understand is that hermione is supposed to be like this goody two-shoes but she's like constantly doing harry and ron's homework which i'm pretty sure goes against the rules of you know school so she's clearly not such a goody two-shoes still don't like her though probably never gonna like her so i'm at the part where gryffindor just beat slytherin in the quidditch match and malfoy's being like a little sore loser and making fun of mrs weasley and then harry's mom and the only thing that's going through my head is the one scene from white chicks where they're having like a your mom is so fat like kind of battle and the two like girls from the movie are like oh you want to talk about mama oh you want to talk about mama your mama's blah 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 blah. And that's literally all that can go through my head right now but it's like kind of funny because i'm just picturing like the twins doing that and i'm i'm here for it honestly so hagrid is finally back but he's like beat up because something happened to him i don't know what it is yet but i'm about to throw some hands at whoever hurt my angel baby unicorn unless it's Voldemort and then Harry can take him but I'm not happy actually you know what I would fight Voldemort for Hagrid because he's worth it I am pissed and I need to keep reading to figure out what happened to him and who I need to be mad at I officially hate Umbridge because she acts like Hagrid is a stupid troll because of her whole like half-breed thing and his mom was like a giant but Hagrid is like the sweetest little baby angel unicorn like I've been saying for this whole series like I love him so much and anybody who's like rude to him needs to die in a fiery pit of death so I hope that she gets attacked by a flying horse whatever they're called thestrals whatever I hate her I hate her so much so I'm at the part where Cho like makes a move on Harry and she's like I really like you Harry like under the mistletoe. What I don't understand is like they've literally had like maybe 12 to 15 words exchanged between each other and it's usually like hi and then something about Cedric. So this is clearly just like a pity fuck. So like Harry needs to like run away from her because it's not gonna turn out well. Like th those things never work out. So I just read the part where Harry is dreaming and he ends up turning into a snake and then he attacks Mr. Weasley. And is that supposed to be that like he turned into Voldemort who was a snake who attacked Mr. Weasley because he wakes up and his like scar is burning which usually means something to do with Voldemort right so like did he actually get attacked or is it like a vision that that's what Voldemort's planning because earlier on they were saying that Voldemort was planning something but it was taking too long to happen and he was really mad about it so is that what it was and now he fulfilled what he wanted to do or like what is going on i am so confused but harry is a snake voldemort is a snake somebody is a damn snake 
I'm lost. Okay, so I'm sure I'm supposed to like know the answer to this question by now since I've read four of these books, but why is everyone so scared to say Voldemort's name? Like, is it just because he's like the most evil wizard in the world or is there like another reason? Like, does he know you're talking about him or something? Like, I'm very confused because it's getting kind of annoying seeing everybody like flinch every time somebody says Voldemort. Like, people need to calm the fuck down. So, I'm at the part where all the criminals just like broke out of Azkaban and that's why like Voldemort's super happy and blah blah blah. But the thing is, it was put into the Daily Prophet and it has all the pictures of the criminals and like what they did. And it talks about Bellatrix Lestrange and how she was convicted of torturing and basically putting Neville's parents into the psych ward but it's supposed to be some huge secret that his parents are in the psych ward which I don't understand because obviously it was probably put into the Daily Prophet when Bellatrix was first put into Azkaban about why she was there so clearly it wouldn't have been some huge secret like everybody would have known about it so did I just find a plot hole in Harry Potter? Maybe, unless I'm just dumb and like thinking I'm smarter than I actually am. Okay, I have no idea if this theory makes any sense, but I'm gonna tell you guys it anyways. Okay, so I think that creature is the one who helped the 10 prisoners of Azkaban like escape. I'm thinking somehow with the picture of Bellatrix in his little hidey hole, I'm thinking that because different wizards and witches can like move from picture to picture that she somehow was like talking to Creature and like got him to somehow figure out a way to release them. I feel like this is totally way off and that like they put on like a hex or something that doesn't allow prisoners to travel from picture to picture, but that's my guess. Probably wrong but that's what we're saying. So I would just like to come on here and publicly announce that Marietta is a shady bitch. I'm putting her in the burn book from Mean Girls right now. She's in love with Cho and that's the only reason why she told about Dumbledore's army because she's pissed off that Cho likes Harry and not her. So that's my theory. Who does that to their friend? So I'm at the part where Umbridge just got named like headmistress of Hogwarts because Dumbledore traveled wherever the heck he went after the whole thing with Marietta the snake and what I don't understand is how Umbridge didn't realize that when she called Harry into her office and was like yo let's all be friends and you know drink tea together because we're friends just us girls doing girly friend things like why did she not realize that obviously Harry's not stupid and would realize that she was trying to like put a truth potion or whatever that's what I'm assuming is happening right now because she's like drink 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 when I get given a drink and somebody's like, you need to drink it right now. I'd be like, bro, um, stop trying to drug me, homie. We ain't that close. Like, <laughs> no. So I just, like, if somebody keeps telling me to drink shit, I'm not going to drink shit. Like, why did she think that Harry would be like, okay, bottoms up. Like, <laughs> idiot. I'm at the part where Umbridge just goes to Hagrid's cottage to, like, sack him. And he, like, puts up this huge fight. And they have, like, stun guns. And then McGonagall runs out. And she gets shot with a sh stun gun. Isn't she, like, 80 years old? Like, would that not, like, fuck up her heart or something? Like, I feel like you should not be stunning 80-year-olds. Like, she ain't moving. She's on the ground. It says she didn't get back up. So we don't even know if she's okay. I'm assuming she is because she's in the sixth and seventh book but like and also Hagrid's a fucking badass like being like you'll never take me alive and then running off with Fang on his shoulders love him such a great guy Oh, reason 7,652 why I hate Hermione. Harry was in the middle of his owls and he fainted because he was having a nightmare about Voldemort and how Voldemort has Sirius. Side note, if Sirius dies in this book, I am not reading book six and seven like I will because you guys want me to but I'm gonna be bitter about it because Sirius is like my favorite character and if he's not in the books like what's the point? Anyways back to what I was saying. Harry fainted and then ran to Hermione and Ron to like tell them about it and Hermione's like well Harry like you don't have to go save Sirius like you have a bit of like a saving people problem and then she goes on to have the audacity to be like in the Triwizard Tournament when you save that little girl like you didn't have to do that like she's a little girl what do you mean like what Hermione what like he saved you too so I would shut the fuck up and zip your lip my friend because you would be dead 
if it wasn't for him. So the fact that he saved a little girl is a good thing. Shame on you. Okay, so might like Hermione depending on what she does next. So Harry and Hermione and all the gang got caught by Umbridge trying to talk to Sirius to see if he was getting tortured by Voldemort. And so Hermione starts fake crying and being like, we have a weapon and we we're trying to talk to Dumbledore and let me show you where it is. So my thought is that she's gonna go lead Umbridge to Grop, Grope, however you say Hagrid's brother's name, the other giant thing that's hiding in the Forbidden Forest. And then he's gonna squish Umbridge. If that happens, then I like Hermione. If not, she's still on my kill list. We'll see. Okay, so Luna is a little sweetheart trying to help Harry and Ron and Hermione go to London to save Sirius. And Harry's being an absolute dickhead. Like, he's like, um, excuse me, you're not included in our little gang. You're not cool enough for us because you're weird. And I just want to, like, punch him in the face because Luna's adorable. And like it's nice of her to even offer to help him because he's been nothing but mean to her this entire time and like she's done nothing to him but be supportive and a good friend and it's really starting to piss me off. Harry can choke. I'm also a big fan of Ginny now. She's like super sassy and like won't take shit from anybody which I'm totally here for. So Ginny is added to my list of favorite characters officially. Um so I'm at the part where Sirius is going through the veil is he dead or is he not dead like is he gonna come back it doesn't say that he's dead it just says that he's gone so like i know that it happens i know that he does die but can this not be the time that he dies because like i don't want to continue i don't want him to be dead yet because then i have to go through two more books with him not in it and i'm not okay with that so this is my petition to say that Sirius is not dead and he actually is just living his best life in like the Bermuda Triangle or something. I'm so mad right now just because like Sirius is dead. Like I can't process anything and anything anybody says is just making me so angry. But right now Dumbledore is going on about how it's his fault that Sirius is dead because he didn't tell Harry things because he's old and he forgets how to be young. Like no bitch. Fuck you. I hate you. Sirius is dead and I'm really mad like I'm gonna cry because I'm like so mad about it <laughs> so I'm at the part where Harry just found out the full prophecy that Dumbledore heard from Sybil which claims him to be the person who's supposed to destroy Voldemort but then it also goes on to say that Neville could have been the boy because he was also born at the end of July like can we just take a minute to think about what that series would be like having to watch Neville try to be like Harry Potter and just like fucking everything up because honestly I am ready for that and if anybody wants to take a stab at writing that creation I will definitely read it. I'm finally done the fifth Harry Potter book. I'm like heartbroken and I'm still like really bitter about like everything that happened at the end of this book. Uh, I don't don't know how to feel like I kind of just want to like go lie down and cry over Sirius still I like the, I knew it was coming I did I knew it was coming and I'm still just not okay obviously I'm giving it five out of five stars like no questions asked we all knew that this was coming but yeah let me know if I should you know continue on with this series do number six in the same fashion as this or if I should take another two-year hiatus because you guys hated this I don't know let me know and I'll see you all in my next video Goodbye! <laughs>